Welcome back to the channel guys. It's been a long time since I've posted. I do apologize for that. I've just been extremely busy uh, producing a extreme, well, moderately extreme metal record. <laughs> this is the other thing I do uh, aside from Boodle. Uh, I, I play guitar and make music. Um, that's, that's my passion, my, my sort of first love I suppose you might say. Um, serves a different purpose. Uh, for me than say Kendall or EI does. Anyway, quite recently we had a visitor over um, and uh, a guy by the name of Dan and uh, he visited us from Hungary. He's kind of traveling around and doing various bits of bobs and anyway he decided to stop by uh, for a visit and we're expecting him back um, a couple of times uh, over the space of the next uh, year or so, I believe. Anyway, the point is, he's another Jordan player, so this is quite a rare treat for us in our dojo because at present I'm the only person who plays Jordan in our dojo, and it's very rare that we come across any Jordan um, unless we go to Shi'ai or something like that. You know, if we travel across to mainland England, then you know, we, we tend to come across one or two others. But otherwise, it's, yeah, very much a rarity. So it was an interesting chance for me to practice Chudan against Jordan. Uh, usually I'm, you know, I'm I'm the practice dummy for everybody else who wants to practice Chudan against Jordan. So this time I got my uh, chance to, to play on the other end, which I believe is very important for your development of Jordan. <clears throat> anyway, uh, of course, we also had a chance to practice I Jordan. Didn't focus much on it. Um, I just saved it for our very last kind of K chord to close out um, his uh, close out one of the sessions that he was at um, that we were all at together. Anyway, so I thought we'd take a look at the video and talk a little bit about different approaches because his Jordan is uh, there. There are some very obvious differences. Um, in terms of how he plays his Jordan compared to mine. So I'm going to start off by saying that um, his Jordan is more like the short eye kind of modern Jordan with a much more kind of flat um, angle of the blade and much squarer hips and he does this kind of thumb resting bit as well and I noticed some differences in terms of like performances you know, there's, there's some advantages and disadvantages, I think, to what he does. Whereas my Jordan interpretation, I think, is probably a little bit more over towards the kind of classical Jordan interpretation. I have more Hanmi in my stance, there's more twist. Um, although I am trying to actually find a, a better compromise for my hips, I am trying to square my hips up now a little bit more. Not fully. I still want. Uh, I don't mind having a little bit of Hanmi in the in the you know the back foot. But just to engage the hips a little bit more, I think that's a bit more explosive. Anyway, um, but my sword would tend to be much more at the kind of textbook 45 degrees left hand, you know, two fists in, in front of the left eye. A little bit more height maybe, a little bit less kind of resting against the men. Um, anyway, I noticed a few things. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and watch Keiko in a second. but. It basically boils down to my observations, if I could sum them up. First thing is a bit of context. <clears throat> like myself, Dan is fourth Dan. And he started shifting over properly to Jordan around that third to fourth Dan kind of phase, that, that change. Um, as is the case for myself. As such, we're not hugely experienced in Jordan. Um, so although the interaction, the interaction is quite good because it's still fourth down Kendo. So we understand a Sen and Seme and these sorts of concepts and we're working on those quite a lot. Um, which is kind of what we need to be doing for our level. So the interaction there, it, it, you know, is there and the communication is there. The, by the very nature of uh, Jordan, there's quite a lot of Ayuchi, which is same time attacks. Okay, um, and a lot, a big reason for that is you don't want to really be a blocker or a 
something like that in Jordan. You don't want to, you know, if somebody comes to ski you, you don't want to kind of drop your hands like this. Um, if they, you know, threaten your corte, you want to resist the urge to kind of lift and back off, if anything. Um, instead, you should be prepared to kind of cut through or cut down onto or something like that. Try to make something of it. Even if it's just to break their technique, that's better than kind of getting defensive and blocking and trying to cover things. As a result, if you're not very good at Jordan yet, it's very easy for it to get a little scrappy and that's exactly what you're going to see here. As far as his more kind of modern style of Jordan, I think it really does help promote a little bit more explosiveness and snappiness in the cuts. So, and I talked this over with Dan and we're broadly in agreement. Um, he knows his hands are fast, but he, for him, he feels a frustration in his, in his legs. So that's what he's working on. He's really, really concentrating on his footwork and trying to level up his footwork to kind of be able to match what he can, what he feels he can do with the shin eye work. And I think that's a fair enough assessment. Uh, for my own self, I was talked about this on the channel before. I'd like a little bit more snap and explosiveness from my waza. Same thing as well, also from the footwork. Hence why I'm working on kind of putting a little bit more of a straight angle into my hips and a little less hanmi in that sense. Still gonna, I still want to carry a bit of it in my shoulders uh, because I think it makes it harder to cut door. Now I cut door on Dan a couple of times here in this Keiko. One of them is quite a good door strike, but the opportunity wasn't as clear as I wanted, which is the first one that you'll see. And then there's a second one with a strike. Uh, the opportunity is good. I get a little jink from the hands. There's a little jink up from the hands, but I wasn't the the strike wasn't particularly great. It was a little bit front ended on the door, a little bit flat for my taste. So although Dan acknowledged it, I didn't really think it was appropriate to consider it ipon. So I, I just kind of gave the nod to say, no, it's fine. Let's you know. Let's go again kind of thing um, and then I think there's a third one which is just not not it's kind of chancing your arms not really a good genuine opportunity um, a couple other things I would say his strength to cut um, katate was a for Kote I, he's definitely more accomplished with that it's something that I'm working on and struggling with I tried a couple of different things as well it's a bit harder to recover the shinai uh, you know when you swing and you cut through and yet and if it misses I had to get used to that I'm kind of pre-programmed to recover quite well against somebody playing Chudan but with Jordan with the hands up high all the time it's kind of cut it's very similar to doing Katate Sayumen yeah or Yokomen um, so it's you'll see like what looks like a bit of like over swinging that's me trying to retrieve the, the Shinai um, in a decent frame of time <laughs> so yeah it's a uh, first time experience for me so it, it yeah I'm not surprised it looks a little scrappy here and there but one thing I did find though for his Kamai with carrying the Shinai very flat and quite low is um, there's a tendency sometimes to just prior to a cut or as part of his semi you know if he drops his body down um, at the moment if you look like his back leg his knee is a little bit more bent than he probably would like it to be so there's a little drop down sometimes before it goes. And sometimes the hands kind of move a little bit with that. So if you can kind of semi to invite a bit of waza or create a bit of uncertainty, what you get is this kind of uh, uh, like that. So if you get that hesitation where he's like, Do, am I going to cut? Am I going to cut? I've been able to open his men a couple of times that way. Where you think if you've got a bit more of an orthodox angle on the sword and it's a little further clearer of the head like higher up in terms of the grip then your men is pretty well covered it's really you know so he I think he found it really hard outside of Hickey was it to get a clean strike on my men uh, I found it quite hard to hit his corte though by contrast so by carrying it a bit flatter like this the distance to his corte you know he's got a good 10 centimeters extra back from where it would usually be and so when he doesn't want to concede it you know it's small small use of footwork and a little 
adjustment and it's very easy to miss his corte that way. And he can do it on both sides as well. He's actually quite good at protecting both sides because they're roughly in line with each other. Uh, whereas with orthodox, your left hand is much further forward. The right hand is still where it is, but it's very easy to bait people with the left hand, I would say much more, and get them thinking about cutting your corte. And so I really favor chasing those Devana men because if they do go for the corte, they just unleash a straight attack down the middle and it finds its way to its mark. Um, yeah, otherwise, uh, in terms of techniques, yeah, I mean, it was just straight man, corte door. My hikiwaza didn't really land. His hikiwaza were pretty strong. He's good at transitioning on his feet that way. I think he's got a bit more Shia experience in Jordan under his belt than I do, I would say. Although I don't really know how much, you know, bearing in mind the pandemic and all that kind of thing. So, anyway, let's take a look and um, give this cake for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So I take... Uh, a one-handed grip just to open up because it was a little, uh, you know, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll not put two quarter on the table just out of the blocks until I've kind of seen him move a bit in front of me. And then uh, we'll take it from there. And I, I kind of got the feeling, I was like, I don't think that other quarter is immediately under threat. So I went back to a two-handed grip. Okay, so a chance for a... Uh, uh, Dead by the man didn't really come off a little bit of clashing of the shin eye in the middle So here I go for the door strike the door strike is pretty good But like I said, I really wanted that lift and um, I didn't quite manage to sell it to him So, you know, he, he still had his come eye about him. He still had his his focus. So I don't really consider that Nippon We're still kind of feeling each other out here quite a lot Chance for uh, Katate Kote, but a little bit short of the mark. Short of the mark again, and uh, the through swing, like I said, trying to figure out ways to kind of retrieve Mushino back to himself fast. Another chance for Katate Kote. That one was a bit closer. It was probably the best one I did in the whole encounter, I would say. little stab at uh, Hikikote there, but it didn't come off. And that was his waza there. Okay, so now we go again. I'm in. Clashing in the middle. So one thing I'm pleased about, another chance for Katate Kote. That one wasn't bad. Um, just narrowly missed. One thing I am pleased about is my use of my feet. I'm quite active, I think, um, in terms of like working for Seme. I think I'm definitely not being lazy in terms of how I'm trying to uh, go for the Sen. I was closer for the door, but like I said, I didn't feel like I got a clean strike. But he definitely felt like he was caught, so the opportunity was good. And because he stands with his hips much more square, his door is definitely much more on the table than mine is. Um, so we go, he gets his hikiman, and that closes out the keiko. And then as is kind of tradition in our dojo, we don't do this every time, but a lot of times we'll play for ippon shogu. So just play for an ippon basically until somebody believes there's been an ippon. That was a good uh, amen. It, it, on reflection, at the time, I don't think there was an Ippon there, but on reflection, it's quite close, I think, for myself, getting Devana there. Okay, try for the Kote again. Didn't quite come off. Okay, so now Pepper is man. He gives me a little push to let me know. Try for the door again, but that one, my heart wasn't in it, but I knew he was closing the distance and pressuring me, so I had to find a way out of that corner, basically. 
So here my guard holds up pretty well, which I was happy about. Now here's where I really like build the semi, build the semi. And he gives me the nod there. I'm reasonably happy with that ip on it. There was a little bit of like holding my ground and having a bit of patience there. And not just going at the first uh, twitch or, or sign of a break, but, but really like holding, holding true, basically, you know, keeping my alertness really high. Until that moment where it, it's definitely a break, not like a glimpse of a break. So there we go. There's uh, my first Keiko with somebody in I Jordan. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Like I said, early days for us both. Pretty scrappy stuff. But we've both got pretty clear ideas on what we need to work on. And uh, I think we've got a good direction. And luckily enough, like I said, he's going to be coming back a couple of times. So we'll be able to kind of pick up where we left off and check in with each other from time to time uh, and it's nice to have a, a Kendall Jordan buddy uh, to bounce things off of so yeah let me know what you think in the comments and I'll be back soon with another video right take care guys see you around